Hello, hello, Deck It Out DIYers. This video is to show you how to create each of the projects in your Deck It Out Tray of the Month kit. Happy Halloween. I just love this tray. I'm really excited to get painting it. Um, so take a look at what you see in front of you. When you receive your kit, um, everything will be stacked for you. So as you unwrap, um, you'll find that all of the pieces should be stacked within the project or near the project. So this trick-or-treat might be kind of crunched up so it all fits on there. Um, your face for your pumpkin, happy haunting, how fun is that? Now, this is a round, okay? And then it shows you where the lines, so you can put um, your house on it. And then your lines are engraved for your words and then your back goes wherever you'd like around there. Same with October 31st. However, with the candy corn one, it's not engraved. So you'll put it wherever you want within your candy corn. Um, these are the pieces um, for the garland that will go around your tray. So we will include twine um, and then the holes. You can string your twine through to hang your garland. Um, and then this is just a solid piece, okay? You will also receive your stands and backers on a sheet. So these two stands will go together and these two will go together. This is the kickstand and I can show you how that works. Um, I would probably use the kickstand on the Happy Haunting just because it's round. Um, and it would be nice to have a backer. So let's dive in. Make sure you have all your pieces. You'll have glue, you will have sponges, you will have a little detail brush as well um, for these tiny pieces to paint the candy corn. Um, and we're gonna dive in, I'll share a few tips and then we'll paint. Okay, let's jump into some tips. Now for smaller pieces like the candy, I would recommend taking the tape that we've included or if you have your own painter's tape at home, Take your painter's tape and put your small pieces on the painter's tape while you paint them. Because now when you dab, you can hold on to the paint and not the item um, so you don't get paint all over your hands. Now, here's a little tip trick. Let me see if I can get you zoomed in here. Yellow doesn't always show up the best. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on my sponge, okay, dab it off, and I'm gonna paint my candy corn all white. Knowing that candy corn is three different colors, I'm still gonna paint it all white, have a nice strong coat, and once it's dry, then you can come in with your detail brush. You'll just take a little bit of paint and I believe, yep, yellow will go on the bottom. So I'll just put a little bit of paint on and that will make it a lot brighter. Let's see if that helps. Okay, so not a lot of paint, very little paint. Okay. And paint that one. Now, you can reuse your detail brush if you like. We like to paint with baby wipes in the studio, so you can grab a baby wipe and just wipe off that little bit of paint. Um, we will include a couple of these, but if you need to reuse them multiple times, then you know that that's our little trick. That's what we do. I'm gonna take orange now, and I'm gonna fill the orange in. And these lines are engraved on here, so you should be able to um, partition this very fairly easily because the lines are there for you. And then you'll just paint them in and let these dry. Okay, I would, I would recommend the same process for the other pieces of candy. Um, and the other pieces of candy have details in them. They have some spiders, which is really fun. So if I were to paint the, the popsicle purple, remember dip it in paint, dab it off, and then dab lightly on your popsicle. Now, 
when you dab lightly, you won't get a lot of paint in those grooves. If you get paint in the grooves, you could take a, key, um, a toothpick or an X-Acto knife and pull out those little bits. If you want the spider to show up a little bit more, take your little detail brush, make sure there's not a lot of paint on it, and you could color in that spider. So that's kind of fun too, to add a little bit more detail to it. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this project. So some tips for painting with the letters that are engraved and then these letters you want to show. So for this project, I would paint the frame. I'm going to paint this background a solid white color just because I'm gonna put colorful words on and I am going to put colorful candy on. So I'm gonna do white. Now, I put a little bit of paint on. I'm kind of dabbing it right now so that I don't have a lot on my sponge. And then when you go over the top of this, don't push hard, okay? Really light with the paint. When you paint over the ju I'm just here candy part, you don't have to be as careful because you are going to have these cutout letters that we're going to glue on top. These lines are here just as a guide to help you place your letters or your words, okay? So you could even take and pull the paint off the side. So I have paint on my sponge. Again, not a ton of paint, but paint on my sponge and I'm pulling it off the side because the edges are burnt. They're cut on a laser, so they have burnt edges, which are really nice because then you don't have to paint them. You can certainly paint them if you'd like. Okay, so we're just gonna pull the paint off the edge, get this coated really well. And again, I'll go back here because it is dry, so I'm just gonna dab a little bit more. If it fills in more than you like, again, take that X-Acto knife, take um, a toothpick, or paint over it with a little detail brush. Paint over it to make it stand out even more if you would like. So follow this process while you're painting all of your pieces and then we will come back, we will put all of the pieces together and then we will glue. Okay, I'm gonna share another tip. Take your big sponge and cut it into um, multiple chunks of paint or sponge pieces if you want so that you can paint multiple colors. And here's a little trick that will help you have more vibrant colors. So paint the base of your project white if you're going to use yellow or green and sometimes orange. If you paint the base, your, your colors will pop more, they'll be more vibrant. Um, orange, you don't necessarily have to, that will, it will be a darker orange. Um, if you paint the base white and then paint orange over it, it will be a brighter orange. So this is my painted orange look. I painted it white. This letter here, I did not paint white. So there's a little bit of a difference. Um, so it's just a little tip. So you're, I'm just taking my sponge. I cut it into a few pieces um, because I used my sponge to paint backgrounds. And this doesn't have to be anything gorgeous. Okay, I just painted it really quick. And I didn't have to worry about the grooves because um, the words, I can still see them. Now I can go in. I'm not gonna really worry about that one. I am. I can go in and make my score lines here for the um, shiplap a little bit more prevalent. Um, again, you can or you don't have to do that. And it will take a couple of seconds here. Okay, but
but once once I do that, then I'm gonna go back. I really wanted this sign to be orange. So I'm gonna take my orange, dab it in paint. It's pretty, I've been using it, so it's pretty well coated. And then I'm just kinda gonna brush it off the side here and get the coverage that I want. So you still might have to do two coats to get the coverage that you want, um, but it will just be a little bit brighter, okay? So that's our last tip. We will paint all the projects and get started. All right, we've got all of our pieces painted. Um, the black twine is to string your boo sign or boo garland, I should say. Um, I have all of these laid out. Nothing is glued yet. I wanted to make sure I have all my pieces and that I like all my colors because if I don't like my colors, I can go back and change it. I can go repaint it. So for example, for this candy corn, I painted one side black and I painted one side white. And so I think I'm gonna go with the black, um, the black outline, but I didn't know what I wanted, so I painted two colors. Um, for the Happy Haunting, you saw that I painted the green background and then painted the yellow inside, and now that it's dry, I wanted to lay it down to make sure that all my white was covered up and also that all my yellow was showing where it needed to and not outside um, the house. Okay, so check to make sure everything is laid out. Um, all your pieces are where you kind of want them. And then you can just start gluing. So you'll take your glue. This is super glue. This will glue your fingers together, so be careful with it. You'll just flip over your pieces. And you don't have to add a crazy amount, but I make sure I get pretty good coverage. Um, just like little dots here and there, and then on the little cutout pieces but nothing too crazy. And then of course, around the edge or at least in the corners so that ev every touch point is pretty much covered. Then you'll just lay it down again. Watch out for the glue because it will glue your fingers together. And then just make sure everything is square when you um, lay it down. Okay, I'm loving, 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 loving this kit. So everything is glued together. I just wanted to show you the backer pieces that you'll get. So you'll get a stand, okay? So those come together like that. Um, this can hold your sign. Now every month, your kit will include the backer. So if you do not paint them, you can reuse them for all your um, all your trays, okay? And then we also have, um, this is called a, like I call it a kickstand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue it here and I'm gonna feel with my thumb to make sure it's level. Okay, so you're gonna glue your backer. And I'm putting it on this one because this one is gonna stand next to my tray because it's larger. Um, if it was going to stand on my tray, maybe I wouldn't do this, but um, maybe arrange it on your tray before you decide which project gets the kickstand because you glue these on um, and you won't take it off. And then this little piece goes in. You can glue it on if you want, but when you put it in your bag, um, that won't work. So if you glue it on, you can't put them in the bag, but if you don't glue them on, you can. And then... Oh, you'll, I'm just trying to make sure you can see, but you'll see that it will stand 
on the back side. Hopefully you can see this standing and it holds it up nice and easy. Not on this surface, obviously, but it will hold up your sign. Okay, so that's how your kickstand will go on and you'll fit right in there. Either way fits and they'll hold up your sign. Okay, so the last part of our video will be our bag to put all of our pieces in. Super exciting, so stay tuned for that. We're gonna show you how to apply the stencil and then paint, and then you'll peel up the stencil.